Hi guys, today I'm releasing an update of my photograph add-on for Blender, which adds motion blur controls to your camera. Uh, it took a bit longer than expected because it turned out to be a little bit more complex than I thought. It was hard to find a workflow that would fit and people working on still images like photographers and people working on animations like cinematographers. But I think I found something that works pretty well, but I'll let you be the judge of that. So let's have a look at the scene. Um, this is an old scene of mine that I've modified for this demo. And this is just a car that moves across the frame. Um, it's a 24 frame uh, animation, so it's a one second animation because I'm using 24 FPS. And when I render it, I get this image, so I don't have any motion blur. So let's select the camera, and here in the photograph add-on, I have a motion blur option, so I can check it. And it's going to tell me that the motion blur is disabled in the render tab, so you can enable it from here. And you see they checked it here in the render settings. And it's the same as depth of field. Um, these are not entirely linked, so you can always use motion blur and you can always use those values if you're used to them. Um, but if you want the camera add-on to override them, then you can click that one. So now um, let's use a uh, shutter speed of uh, 40th of a second and let's r render it again and see how it looks with motion blur. So yeah, now my car is blurred because it's moving. And uh, if I want, I can change my shutter speed uh, to make it longer. So it's also changing the exposure because uh, I'm in manual mode. So the shutter speed affects the exposure. If you would be in EV mode, then that would only affect the motion blur and not the exposure. So I can lower the ISO a bit and I will render it again. And now since it's a pretty long shutter speed, then yeah, I'm getting a lot of motion blur. It's almost a ghost, just like trails of the car. So it's working as expected. You can also like make it very long, a very short uh, shutter speed, and that will just remove any motion blur if you want. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, but there's something to keep in mind that the frame rate is really important. Um, so let's talk about it for, for a bit. If I play back my animation here, um, you can see that the car is pretty slow, like 24 FPS, it's kind of slow. But if I change it, and let's say if I go for double the amount of uh, frames, so 48, like the, the Hobbit, for instance, the Hobbit movie was filmed in 48 frames per second, then my car moves twice as fast. And um, so if my car moves twice as fast, if I do a render now, and I can compare to the previous one, so this one, this one was 48 of a second, so if I go back to my camera, I'm still at 40 of a second. And I will render that one here on this slot, for instance. And you can see that I have more motion blur. I have actually twice the amount of motion blur because my frame rate is twice as fast. So yeah, th that's a good way to change your motion blur without actually um, having to change your animation if you're using the shutter speed. As a photographer, I think you can understand how it works. But um, there's another way to control the motion blur, and this is using shutter angle. Um, so here you have this icon, and you can click on it, and it's going to change your shutter speed into shutter angle. And something that you may have noticed is that my shutter angle value here is um, always, like, as a guide, is displayed. Um, so here if I actually change the shutter angle, then it will tell me which shutter speed it corresponds to. And um, yeah, um, so I have a shutter angle that can go from 1 to 360. 360 is a full circle. Um, but this is a soft max because Blender doesn't uh, limit you physically to a real circle, as in real old cinema cameras. So you can also change it above if you want to, and that would make it like very long exposure. Like you can see here, it converts the shutter speed to something much longer. So more motion blur. But anyway, um, so let's go back to 180, which is what is the most common um, shutter angle in cinema. Uh, if you don't know about shutter angle, I'm gonna put a link to a video in the description below because um, it's it's important notion to know, and uh, that's what cinematographers use to uh, talk about the amount of motion blur. Even if the new digital cameras don't have uh, those kind of uh, circular shutter, 
uh, we still use that value as a reference because we used to see movies in 24 fps in a cinema and this has a certain amount of motion blur so let's do a render with that and we are using 48 fps it's a bit dark so let's expose a bit so that's how much blur i'm getting when my car is going that fast so let's go back now to 24 fps so now my car is twice slower but if i render it again with my shutter angle of 180 degrees let's see what happens And what you're going to notice is that this has the exact same amount of blur between 48 fps and 24 fps so it might be a bit confusing but it actually makes sense because the shutter angle is relative to the frames and the the difference of position between two frames and if you are looking at 24 fps the difference of the position of the car is the exact same as any frame rate if i put 60 it's just the same difference. So that's why the motion blur is not affected. If you would want the motion blur to be affected, then you would have to change the length of your animation. So now I will have to change the end frame. I will take this key of animation, put it to 48. And now I have, so now my car is not moving uh, as fast as before. It's not half of a second. It's actually back to one second. And if I stop here, and if I render it again, then I can render it here. What you're going to notice is that I have less motion blur because the difference between two frames is just less. So what you think about it when you're working with a shutter angle, it makes sense. Like that's how it should work. Uh, your frame rate, I assume that you're not going to change it all the time in your project anyway especially when you do animation you just stick to the value so i think that this is a proper way to use it oh and something i wanted to mention uh, when you're changing the fps here you can see that it's affecting everything in real time which is great but the reason for that is that i have the camera panel open uh, if you would do it uh, without the camera panel open it's not going to affect it in real time you would have to open the panel again and it will apply the settings um, and also, if you would change it like this uh, with an official build, then that would not update. You would have to press the reapply settings buttons, just so you you, you remember that. Um, and uh, other than that, I would like to say thank you for all the feedback that I received when I released the add-on. It was very positive, and you had some good ideas, like the motion blur, for instance. So keep them coming. Any suggestions or any feedback? I'm super happy if I can improve the add-on. That's it for today. Uh, thank you very much and have a nice day.